Wait a second, why am I doing a video on the Z690 board in 2023 of all years? Now is actually the perfect time to pick up a Z690 mirror board like this one, because you can have them for quite a lot cheaper than the Z790 counterparts with almost no downsides. And whether you're going for the DDR5 or DDR4 variant of this mirror board, you can save a roughly $20 compared to the Z790 Tomahawk instead. And that $20 could go a long way in your PC building budget, you can like... I don't know, buy a USB stick or something with that money. But whether you spend that $20 on tech or getting drunk at a bar or whatever, what exactly do you sacrifice by going last gen rather than current gen? Because apart from a small improvement in aesthetics, it isn't really that obvious from the start. But delving deeper, there are a few differences. Starting off with CPU power, here we have 16 plus 1 plus 1 power phases, rated at 70 amps. That is pretty much identical to what's present on the Z790 Tomahawk, though the VRM configuration on that mobile board is rated at a maximum of 90 amps instead. Though honestly, that isn't something that will leave most people up at night, and if it does, well, you're candidate number one for touching some grass. Though PC expansion does see a small win for the Z690 variant, with a primary 16x slot rated at Gen 5 speeds, and two additional Gen 3 16x slots rated at 4x and 1x respectively, with a tiny little physical 1x slot in the middle as well. Compared to the Z790, we only have two full 16x slots, which is, well, something that many people may not even care about, but it is nice to have that extra PC slot just in case. Not to mention, even if you aren't planning on doing damage expansion, which let's be honest, most people at this budget won't be doing so anyway, though having more choice of exactly where your system expansion cards will go can be pretty huge for maximizing cooling potential. M.2 expansion is also pretty much identical with four M.2 slots, though thanks to the great tech advancement that is Z790, all four M.2 slots Lots are Gen 4 rated on the Z790 variant, while only three of them are on this older model. Though at least you get six SATA connectors, something that a lot of manufacturers have been cheaping out on recently, and only including four. Which I know I'm probably like the only person who complains about it, but still. It's an issue, so you know I'll be complaining. Finally, moving on to the rear I.O., here we see the biggest changes between the two models. With the Z690, you do get a respectable 7 USB Type-A ports, with two of them being Gen 2, but on the Z790, you get 8 USB Type-A ports, with all of them being Gen 3 or faster. Not to mention the two USB Type-C connectors compared to the Mio 1 on the Z690. Those are some pretty big quality of life changes, especially seeing how much stuff is now becoming USB Type-C. Though the rest of the rear I.O. is pretty much identical, with Wi-Fi 6E as standard, 2.5 gig Ethernet, integrated DisplayPort and HDMI, and the full array of 5 audio jacks and optical spinoff. So depending on what kind of person you are, all those little changes could add up, and the Z790 might still be worth it to you. But if you're still sticking to the Z690, then the links to it are going to be down in the video description below. And while you're still here, maybe check out our Patreon, because even a single dollar a month truly goes a long way, while well, you get awesome perks as well. I'd also love to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, Key Beach, The Rage, Ella Ronyak, Bodish Velka, Max Sumner, Shade Allcroft, Lensby, Shannon Obgun, and Love and Up. Down there you can find our merch store, which includes our special 10 year anniversary merch that recently launched. And then there's also our Discord server and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all whenever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.